To start the story off and to give a little insight about me, I am an 18-year-old female who grew up in Michigan and have lived in the country for as long as I can remember. And for the heads up, this is a long story, so bear with me. On one particular hot summer weekend, me and a couple friends, including my boyfriend, let's call him Tony, and my older brother, let's call him Brad, decided we were going to go camping for the weekend since it was such a nice warm week. Tony's parents had owned a cabin way out in Ludington surrounded by a huge wooded area with a personal lake and no neighbors for at least four miles. But being stupid teenagers, we didn't really think about that. All we were ready for was to party like any normal teens would. Well, after being there for two hours, our fun had started. Tony's friends had brought tons of alcohol and weed to last us for the weekend so we wouldn't be bored since we had no service and only movies to watch. After it got around 12 a.m. and was pitch black, we had a huge bonfire going. It was a total of six people, including me and Tony. As we talked and laughed about upcoming events in our lives, we were so distracted that we didn't notice that my brother had literally frozen his eyes onto one section of the woods. Mind you, we were all intoxicated and high at the time. Eventually, our talking ceased when Tony realized his friend and my brother had an emotionless expression. Hey dude, you alright? He asked Brad. Silence. Brad didn't reply or even make any movement that would indicate he heard him. After that, I started to get scared as well, as the other two girls there did. It took a lot for my brother to act that way. Eventually, I was the first to catch on that he was excessively staring into a certain spot in the woods. I turned my head and followed his gaze the best I could. And when I finally caught on to what he was staring at, my heart dropped. There, right fucking there, was at first look a dog. At least, that's what I thought. It was some person's dog that wandered off. But then my brain kicked in and I realized there wasn't neighbors for miles, so how could there be a dog? My mind started to race while Tony still tried to get Brad to speak or even move. In one motion, this thing stood up tall. And when I say tall, I mean gigantic. It had to be at least six feet tall. Everyone saw it then. How could you not? The other two girls and the other boy with us gasped as they finally grasped why my brother was as still as a stick. No one moved for what seemed like hours. Tony was the first to talk. N no tail, he mumbled. No one heard what he said but Brad, and I swear to you when I say his eyes widened as big as pan saucers. That freaked me out immediately. What did you say? One of the girls asked. It, it has no tail, he hissed at her. My heartbeat stopped. He was right. There was no tail on this thing. Suddenly, my clouded alcohol mind cleared up in a fraction of a second when I finally realized what this thing was. Now I understood why my brother was basically shitting his pants. This thing was a skinwalker. My instincts kicked in right then and there, but before I could nope the fuck out of there, the thing let off a terrible stench like rotting meat before screaming inhuman-like. The sound was enough to scare the fuck out of everyone. My brother was the first up out of his chair and started shouting native words at the creature while I told everyone to get inside. No one questioned me when they saw just how serious I was, especially Tony. He's never seen me so scared so he knew it was a bad situation. We all hightailed it into the cabin with my brother in tow still shouting native words at the creature, which seemed to keep it at bay while it gave us enough time to get inside. He slammed and locked the door before turning all the lights off and grabbing a special ash from the kitchen counter and started throwing it at every window and door while chanting. Of course, he had everyone freaked out and basically in tears at that moment. After he was done, no one said a word for a long time. All of us in shock. He grabbed our dad's pistol and had it posted by him for hours. Everyone was entirely too shaken up to even question what happened. We must have fallen asleep eventually because I woke up to my brothers packing all of our stuff into the two cars early in the morning. I understood why. We had native family. We knew what we were dealing with and we knew it would come back and maybe not alone. Before we left, I did a blessing on the cabin and spoke a few calming words to the still very freaked out girls. We left as soon as everything was packed up. To this day, we still haven't explained exactly to our friends what happened that night and they never bothered to ask us either. It was about 8.30 p.m. while taking out the trash at work with a co-worker. A large dog approached us. It seemed to be galloping. It wasn't walking normally, like an animal should. Despite the many surrounding lights, the dog appeared to be entirely black. It was silhouetted just enough that you could see its muscle definition. I could see a slight reflection in its eyes. 
it seemed to lack a shadow. My coworker and I both expressed having different experiences and visions of the dog. When I initially saw the dog, I interacted saying, Ah, dog, in excitement. For me, it proceeded to sit entirely still on the cement, staring like a statue. What I saw was a large, fluffy black dog, lazy ears, similar to a Newfoundland dog. My friend expresses seeing the dog as a large, very muscular, aggressive-looking black dog that stood rigid the entire time, staring like it wanted to attack. It was short-haired, muscled, and had pointed ears. I jokingly stated that the dog looked like a skinwalker, not really anticipating that anything would happen. Then we immediately felt a wake of dread fall over us. Something was wrong. We both saw the dog's jaws open, almost as if it was about to bark. We heard a distant yet extremely clear high-pitched, come here. The dog immediately turned to take off. We turned around the corner, the creature was unreasonably far up the road for the short amount of time that it was not being observed. It was wobbling, crossing its paws, walking oddly. When it turned left around a corner, it seemed to nearly stand up on its hind paws, walking on two legs, just before passing around out of sight. The rest of the night was just as interesting. We had trouble with certain objects slightly moving place, nudging a bit, settling. It quickly became more aggressive, but then, just as we were about to leave, we heard a loud and persistent knocking coming from the front of the store. We quickly went to our cars. On the drive home, I tried to blast music and ignore what I had just seen. I heard whispering coming from my back seat. I couldn't quite make out any words. It just sounded like whistling almost. But get this. I saw a random antique clawfoot bathtub on the side of the road, in a field. It was certainly not there the day before, or even that morning on my drive there. The kicker? I was watching the sidelines of the road for animals, and I most certainly saw a buck. He was leaping out in front of the road, a good 50 feet ahead. I slammed on my brakes, but when I got closer, it was merely a bush. Perhaps I was just paranoid, but this is all very concerning. I decided to join my bestie Karen for a three-day stay at her grandmother's place on the res. Her grandmother lives near a place called Tuba City, Arizona, in the middle of nowhere but surrounded by rural homes. We go to college together and I was kind of interested to know about Navajo tradition. The first day we stayed, it was pretty chill, nothing out of the ordinary. Then her grandmother, not that old, maybe around 67, said that a stray dog came out of nowhere and wouldn't leave. To me, it did act kind of strange and it was pretty ugly looking. It had a black, shaggy coat and looked like a mix between a German Shepherd and a Lab. That night, we were watching a movie in the living room. It had big windows that looked out into the front where the cars are parked, nothing fancy. Grandma was in the kitchen cooking dinner and we were watching a movie. Next to the window is a medium bookshelf and where DVDs are kept. Karen went to put back a DVD we had just watched, but she freaked out because the stray black dog was staring at us through the window, standing on top of the wood box outside. Not something normal dogs do from my point of view or hers. Usually, my dog, which is a house dog, scratches the door to be let in. Res dogs aren't house dogs, and dogs inside houses are frowned upon in Navajo tradition, meant to protect the house and owner. The other dogs seem to stay away from it, Karen opened the door and yelled at it to get off the box. It ran off behind the shed. We went to Tuba City to get some groceries, came back to the house. The dog was nowhere to be seen, nothing unusual. Grandma went to visit some people, so it was just Karen and I. About five o'clock, we heard someone trying to open the door. Both of us looked out since there had been no car heard and no dogs barking. Looking out the living room window to the door, and there was the dog trying to open the door with its paws. Two paws wrapped around the brass doorknob, standing on its hind legs. I thought that was weird, but wasn't really freaked out. Karen was. She opened the door and chased it off. Grandma came back later and Karen told her. Grandma did not like what she heard. We got ready to sleep. We slept in the spare bedroom since it had two beds. One window with curtains opened a little. We turned off the light, but there was a sound coming from on top of the roof. Pitter-patter footsteps and scratching sounds and panting. It then sounded like it jumped off onto the large plastic water barrel they had. At first, we heard what sounded like barking, 
but as it grew louder, the other dog seemed to be barking at something also. But all of a sudden, something was running around the house, barking, and it was no dog. This barking sounded human. A deep male voice, barking like it knew that we knew it wasn't a dog. Woof, woof, ruff, ruff, arf, arf. Just exactly like that, adding the W's, R's, and A's, then panting again by the window, and we started freaking out. Karen decided to, in my opinion was stupid, open the curtains to look out. There was the stray dog on its hind legs looking into our bedroom, but this time, it stunk, and what I thought were two black holes in the neck, another pair of eyes twinkled. Think of those ugly glossy spider eyes staring at you, and the paws were deformed looking hands with overgrown, somewhat thick and sharp fingernails. Again, both screaming and shutting the curtains closed, Grandma came running to the door and seeing it. First thing she did was grab ashes from the fireplace, load three shells into the shotgun from under her bed, bless herself a Navajo, and went outside to shoot it, yelling a Navajo about how the thing wasn't welcome there and to get the hell out of there, for it to go linger somewhere else. Them both being traditional, the next day they called a medicine man to come over and put cedar in. He prayed over everyone with cedar smoke and an eagle feather, blessed the place, made us eat better herbs called eagle's gull, or something, and gave me an arrowhead. Apparently I needed to carry one for protection and a little pouch called corn pollen. Seems to work pretty well. The medicine man said the dog was a skinwalker, which in Navajo was a long word, but I called them Yoshis. The body of the stray dog, which was killed by the skinwalker, made an illusion so we wouldn't know it wasn't a real dog. He also said that Yoshis tend to harm people by using some sort of human bone straw to spit at someone think spitballs only deadlier, and get human bones into them. Doctors can't detect it. But the medicine man that day pulled a piece of human skull out of grandma's right shoulder. Pretty big, about two inches long and one centimeter thick. It was real because we watched him pull it out of her. That was intense.